Earlier this month, Halifax marked a very important date in the city's history. The 100th anniversary of the Halifax explosion. You know, it's hard to fully imagine how a disaster of that size would shape a city even 100 years later. The city was truly devastated. The blast left about 25,000 people homeless, a situation made worse by a blizzard that struck the next day. It's also the largest mass blinding in Canadian history, which is directly linked to the creation of the CNIB a year later. Various commemorations, events and art projects have been going on all year in Halifax. One in particular caught the eye of Halifax presenter Laura Bain, an iPhone app called Drifts. On December 6, 1917, in the Halifax Harbour, the SS Emo, a Norwegian supply ship, collided with the SS Mont Blanc, a French munition ship. The result was the largest man-made explosion prior to the atomic bomb. A blast so big it shattered windows in Truro, a town 100 kilometers away. This date is remembered as Halifax's darkest day, with thousands killed and many more injured. I've always been interested in how the explosion shaped the culture and landscape of my city. So when I learned about a new iPhone app that combines my favorite pastime, walking around Halifax, with learning about the explosion, I wanted to check it out. The app was created by the Narratives in Space and Time Society. I met up with member Barbara Lounder to learn more. We meet at a marker 950 meters from point zero. This is the marker for the Hydrostone District which is a nationally recognized area. And it's really important to know about it because it was built as relief housing and it was built in an incredibly short period of time after the explosion. The app provides suggested walking routes or drifts through areas affected by the Halifax explosion. The route that Barbara has chosen for us is called Debris Field. Following points on a map, we head off to Halifax's largest explosion monument. The Fort Needham Memorial Bell Tower stands just over 18 meters at its peak. The triangular-shaped monument contains 14 bells, 10 of which were donated by K Street United Memorial Church in honor of the Orr family who died in the explosion. But the tower is not the only point of interest in this spot. Well, one of the points here is actually not the memorial itself, but there are two points. One is a grove of trees that's in behind the memorial, and it's a grove of beech trees. They're beautiful trees, and it's possible that they were here before the explosion. So they might be examples of what we call survivor trees. So they might have been, you know, blasted down to the ground, but the roots were still alive and they regrew after the explosion. So that's an interesting story and so that's one of our points. And then the other point that we have here is the gap itself, the staircase and what we call the gap between the trees, which is this line that carries you right down to ground zero. At each point of interest on the map, the app gives photos, descriptions and often video. Users can leave comments and even upload their own content. The text information at each location is accessible with voiceover, although the map is not. Button. The monument was designed to let you down to ground zero. The next point on our walk is referred to in the app as a counter monument. Standing about a meter and a half, its minimalist design loosely resembles a chimney, a reference to the chimneys left standing where houses were flattened. It also contains the names of the dead in braille, although unfortunately the braille is not legible by touch. Barbara hopes people will get out and experience the city in a way that brings history to life. I would like to encourage people to go out on their own with the, with the Drifts app or not and uh, discover things in their neighborhood or in the city uh, themselves and uh, to try and use all your senses to gather impressions and feelings and information about the city. So textures, even you know, the temperature of the air in different parts of the city, uh, things that smell, uh, things that you can hear, and all, also things that you can see that will inform you a little bit more on, a, on an experiential level about what happened 100 years ago and how that might still resonate today. Agreed, and with eight more drifts on the map, I leave Barbara and head out to explore. The name Drifts refers to both the drifting of the Emo and Mont Blanc in the harbour after the collision and the practice of drifting or walking through urban spaces. 
If you want to know more but can't get out to Nova Scotia anytime soon, you can take a look at the AMI documentary, The Halifax Explosion, when it re-airs in March, or check it out online at AMI.ca.